I have a 50.5 inch vertical. This is my coach. And together we, how many people do you think we have trained to 40 plus inch verticals at this point? I would say like between 50 and 100. Yeah. Maybe more. Uh, yeah. So we know how to make athletes really freaky. And we have some unique thoughts about the Olympics. This is probably the most Olympic events that I have watched in my whole life. I was pretty, pretty into it this year. Did you even have Peacock to watch the yeah. Olympics? Would you just watch it on NBC? Yeah. All right. I, I, too, I did get Peacock to watch High Jump, though. Oh, nice. I, too, watched more Olympic, specifically track and field, than I ever have, which might be hard to believe, but I've tried to watch every single event outside of the boring ones. Like, I don't want to watch men's 400 hurdles. I'm just not interested in that. Yeah, or I specifically I just don't want to watch that. Just sprinting and jumping. Yeah, is what exactly. I like to watch and basketball. Like. I didn't even. Well, I watched some basketball, but not. A, I, watched no, the I mean, last I watched two the U. Yeah, exactly. Okay, that doesn't <laughs> that doesn't constitute a lot of basketball. <laughs> you watch the USA specifically. It's a lot to me. I don't really. Yeah, you don't. Watch it's hard sports. to believe. But I don't really watch sports. Yeah, it, which outside of the playoffs, we do. We very passionately passionately watch the NBA playoffs. Yeah. Every year. Uh, or try to at least. Anyway, the Super Bowl and the Super Bowl. Yep, he's really you're like a, you know what a creaster is a Christmas Easter. Don't call me that shit. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, I don't know. I don't know what that is. Like, <laughs> sounds like an insult. <laughs> it you is creaster. It's a Christmas Easter Christian. Ones that only go on Christmas and Easter. That's like you with the Super Bowl and the finals. You only yeah. watch sports if it's the Super Bowl yeah. or the finals. You don't even watch the. I don't really watch the MLB either. To be honest, uh, no, I do. I do watch the World Series. Yeah. I watched so every sport that there is. I watched it diligently when I was currently playing the sport. But as soon okay. as I stopped playing it. So you watch dunking. Yeah. Because part of the reason is, like, when I watch sports, I, I don't even watch it for entertainment. I'm like, could I do this? Like, that's what I see it that's in the lens. That's wild. I actually watch it with the 3D biomechanical analyses in my head. Oh, yeah, well, I look cool. at the kinematics and kinetics. Yeah. It's just kind of funny. Not as much anymore, but definitely when I was, like, new a lot early on like when I was first learning a lot I would watch it and be like oh now I know this so let me look at the whip and flow mechanism of a pitcher I always thought that was interesting so yeah. that said we're gonna get into the Olympics what what was your general kind of opinion watching these athletes did you look at them and say wow they're so freaky I could never do that or were you kind of like I think I could do that like what well, because you do that often you have a problem um what what did you think specifically let's talk about the sprints what did you think about that uh so Sprints were ruined for me because my first memory ever of the Olympics, I was, how old was I? This was, we're in 2024. That is insane. Yeah. So how old were you? 20? No, I was 11, 10, 10, 11 years old. Okay. When I, when I first watched the Olympics, I was at my house. My family actually, 08 Olympics, we were watching like all of swimming like because Michael Phelps was yeah, popping Phelps. off. Uh, I barely watched it. And those. then I remember I, like I was the only person in the living room. It was, like, kind of late, and it was Usain Bolt's gold medal oh, yeah. run. And that was, like, the first, like, track and field event that I saw that year or ever. And he broke the record, and I remember just being, like, amazed. That's one of my earliest, like, sports memories, like, watching sports memories. Yeah. Uh, and then I actually kept up with Usain Bolt, like, pretty – I was an avid fan. You were an um, avid Usain that. Bolt fan? So – Everything after having witnessed that and also being young and experiencing that, it's like it's trying to live up to that standard. But this year, uh, me watching the Olympics, it was born out of watching the, the 100 meter uh, documentary on Netflix. Oh, the one with Noah Lyles and all yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was watching that and it just got me really invested in, in all the sprinters, like the women and the, and the men. Uh, right. so it was cool. Which, by the way, they train like an hour from us, like Shikari and Noah. Yeah. Tra less, less. Yeah, yeah. So it was, it was cool seeing that. Um, I like watching any sport that's like maximum output, short bursts of, of power. You know what I mean? So I actually watched all of the prelims cause I wanted to see specifically how really slow people look compared to really fast people. Cause prelims, they'll throw like some random country 45 year old like there was like some marathoner in the previous year she was she ran the marathon at the olympics and then this year she was running the 100 meter dash and she was their olympic athlete and she was like a 45 year old woman it was insane so she ran like you know 15 seconds and like there's like a girl running 11 seconds and i was curious to see what the major differences were when watching them and then you see the same thing on the men's side like you know you'll see someone run really slow and then you'll see someone run like 10 one or something in prelims and oh, by the way, I'm, I'm going to cut you off real quick. This is John's background. Oh, there's yeah. a lot of people that have 
not people don't know that I love track specifically yeah. sprints and the and the the events. Our the first call, events. John John came from the track and field world, and then he basically asked me what I was doing, roasted my training, and then was like, "Imagine what would happen if you trained like a track athlete." That's literally how THP, as you know, it was born. Yes, a hundred percent. So, so just, just keep that lens in mind when you uh, hear me yeah, talk about this track. Is, John was really fast burner. <laughs> He would I wasn't dust super me. Fast. You 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 would when we first started training. He would okay, dust yeah, me yeah, in the fair, in the sprints. Fair. How fast were you? Were My you like time? high tens or low? Uh, I don't know if I ever broke into the tens. Um, I think like I probably split that obviously in like the four by one for sure. But in high school, and like open one hundred, I was never that crazy. I think I ran low elevens there. The four hundred, like when I was six or wait, I actually told Nick Rossi this because he didn't know this. Shout out Nicholas Rossi in. High school, I would have been a legend to Isaiah because I was like when he was four years younger than me and I was a senior or whatever. So he would have been a freshman, I would have been a senior. He would have looked up to me, which is actually hilarious now looking back at, at where we yeah. where we I had are never now. I've I grew up in Utah and I saw like one person dunk. Yeah. And so he I was dunking. I dunked when I was like 14. fourteen. <laughs> yeah. So I was dunking as like an eighth grader. So when he was yeah. like ten, he would have seen me dunking. Um but in high school I was even in middle school, I was a 5'10 high jumper, so I was slated to be relatively good. Typically, high jumpers, they're really good young, and then they improve very, very little as they get older. And uh, that's just the nature of it. They're genetic freaks. I was like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm pretty good, whatever. I jump 5'10. For a 14 year old, that's not bad, but most of the time, that's because most kids haven't developed, and you don't see those big, big jumps until like 15, 16. That's where you'll start seeing guys go over two meters, 205, 220 even sometimes at, at like 16. And then typically there's a trail off a lot of the time. Not always, but a lot of the time that's the case because genetics just takes them so far. So then I, 15, I was running, I was long jumping like 18-ish feet. I was running the 100 around 12 seconds or 11 high. I was high jumping six foot, triple jumping like 39 feet, and then 16, so this would have been my sophomore year, I was a 6'2 high jumper, triple jumping 43 feet, running the 400 right around 51 seconds, 50 point, which is pretty fast for a 16-year-old. And I was long jumping in the 20s, 21, it, or 20 foot change, I think, maybe barely under 21. Was and that then 16? that was at 16 my sophomore year. And then 17, I was high jumping 6'4", running the 100 in the low 11s, high 10s range, probably in that range. The 400 didn't really run off, and I wasn't fit for it, but I could go out there and still run in the 50s. Triple jump, I was in the 44s. After that, I had a bunch of injuries from training, and part of that was I was training myself and didn't know any better, didn't know what I know now. And that was kind of mostly the end of my career. I didn't do it my senior year of high school, but I love track. Love it, love it, love it. I would have probably done the multi in college if I – had the better hip mobility to hurdle and stuff. And I would say genetically speaking, I'm like a probably in the sevens with perfect technique and all the events in terms of output, right? I probably could score that. In terms of speed and endurance and stuff, because you got to have a little bit of everything. And then the event work, I was decent in. Even now I can throw a shot put, or sorry, throw a discus pretty cleanly and I can get a jab to fly, you know, appropriately. Some of the stuff that like team sport athletes will struggle with when they come to track, for me, is like pretty natural. I can pick up the events pretty quickly um, outside of maybe vault. And I'm not saying I'm like a one-on-one -on -one track athlete. I'm sure there's guys that listen to our podcast or some of you watching that would shit on me. <laughs> like, And I, I brush shoulders with a lot of those guys. But for a high school kid in a small town, I was pretty good at track and I loved it. I love track so much. So experience from there, I coached at Duke, which some of you guys may not even know. I was a high jump coach there and helped the hurdlers, 400 hurdlers, 110s, helped some of the multis whenever need be, and then helped some of the sprinters. I didn't write the programs for the most part because the programming was really solid at Duke, but I knew what they were doing and why they were doing it, and we had similar philosophies. So it was it was really good environment. I was also at Altis where Andre de Grasse was, so getting to watch him run was cool. And then I had a lot of experience with my mentor, Mike. So I've been, track is my background. That is how I got to a point of coaching Isaiah even, and him trusting me was me demonstrating my expertise. Like it took a, a lot of convincing to get Isaiah to even want to work with me because he was so skeptical. Like how could this kid that doesn't really know that much about dunking per se be a good coach for this or vertical jump? Like he's not at the level that I am even. and. Uh, so it took a lot of, hey, I'm 
not a genetic freak, but I know how to make genetic freaks better. Kind of, I would say that was generally the conversation, yeah. right? Yeah, and yeah. Um, yeah, so now watching it with that lens, um, I think my takeaway from it this year was slightly different because I actually knew a good number of athletes that were competing, either like just through corresponding on DMs or talking to them even five to 10 years ago, or five, probably five years ago. Like Sandre Gumersen from Norway, he was on our podcast in 2020, 2021. 2020. Yeah, 2020. So four years ago. Uh, this might have been rate. Yeah, it was before the 2021 games. So yeah. seeing him, you know, progress and then you're, you're just so much more invested. I would say that was the biggest difference. Like I was way more invested in the athletes that I had had a personal interaction with at some point. So like Bryn King, she was a female pole vaulter at Duke. She ended up transferring, but like just even getting to spend that one Ro year with Royal her was, Palace. She was a basketball Royal player. Palace, one of our one of our athletes for the Nigerian women's team. Like I was just more invested in the athletes that I had some sort of connection with. It's, at one point, Stephen Marr uh, had signed up for our coaching, and I think technically still has coaching credits, but he just never has talked to us really about it because he had to work with the national team. So even just watching him and being like, "Holy shit!" Like we've actually consulted for Simon uh, Hansen as well, like. Shelby McEwen, Jeremiah Davis, like guys I've just gotten to know over the years, getting to see them compete, um, I was just way more invested. I think watching it, you know, it's, it's interesting because the training is so different. I think a lot of the times we, a lot of the time we assume that it's so similar, but as I've gotten more invested in elite track and talked to a lot of these guys, and as I've gotten more invested in dunking and obviously coach these guys, I've started to see a lot of the dissimilarities, right? Like I look at the hundred and I realize the metrics and mechanics and things that you need to run truly, truly fast is sometimes different. And I'm talking like, this doesn't apply to you unless you're running 10, six or faster, probably 10, five or faster. Like the specific kind of velocities and things that you need to do when you're in that range to get even faster is just, it's insane. Like basically nothing is specific for you other than sprinting really, really fast. So if you're not doing that, a lot of the time you're not going to get faster. Whereas like for us, we see guys improve when we improve max strength and deep knee flexion, power clean, like all the things that you would traditionally think will make you faster. And it does to a certain point. But once you get down to like your world, world class, which is like you're running 10, six or faster, you're, that is very genetically limited. It's very hard to do, I think it, you just shift completely kind of what the training looks like. So I don't know, it just created a, a level of respect for it. I think more than I maybe had in prior to watching the Olympics. And then two, looking at how freaky genetically they are, I just started to maybe a realization is like these athletes are one of one genetically speaking. Like they're not the type of athlete that probably was like really, really bad and then like slowly made incremental gains. Like they probably woke up one morning and they were like, if you're Tara Davis, I'm not saying she doesn't work hard, but she probably woke up one morning, went out and jumped six meters in long jump one day and beat everyone by a shit ton. You know what I mean? Of her peers or like Andre de Grasse, dude went out, was a basketball player. First day was running like 10, five in the hundred or something like dusting everyone. It's not like in your shoes where you were a shit athlete. I mean, I guess in some sense, cause you improve really quickly at first, but I think it's just different, you know, like I see incremental gains with my guys year to year to year and just staying consistent. Whereas a lot of these, other than the multis, I think the multis are slightly different, but specifically for the jumps, high jump and the hundred, long jump slightly different too. I think you can keep making incremental gains there. But even though I did just <laughs> reference Tara Davis and the 400, I, I think you can keep in making incremental gains. But a lot of those events, you just realize how freaky they are. Like just like Hamish Kerr, the high jumper, he literally went out one day and his first day he jumped like, seven, six or something, or it, was, it wasn't seven, six, but it was something crazy. He didn't start high jumping until he was like in his twenties. That was like when he started yeah. and it was like day one, he's over seven feet. I think that when you hear situations like scenarios like that, you kind of understand how genetically gifted those athletes are. And that for me this year, more than ever, I realized, or it was like kind of apparent to me. And I, I like, I love pole vaulters too, because pole vaulters generally, have a very slow progression outside of like uh, Duplantis um, and Mondo. So yeah, that was kind of my lens watching it. I, I guess when you're watching it being a world-class athlete, what was like your lens? Are you in a position where you're like, 
I could never do that? Or are you in a position where, like, I have a 15 inch vertical. I wonder if I could do that. It's definitely the, the latter. <laughs> really? Yeah. For high jump specifically? Uh, the high jump and triple jump for sure. The sprints, not so much. The sprints, I, it's mostly, I wonder what I, I, I look at it from the lens. If all I did was that and I started young, How where would I, I where would I be at? And that's where all the events, like, I wonder, like, if I was a decathlete and train only as a I decathlete. Think, I think as a decathlete, I think you and Donovan and you guys would struggle in the sprints. But I think in terms of your outputs, I mean, I've seen you guys move a lot. And sometimes, like, track is just different than team sports. And you can adopt things in team sports that would not work in track. Like, you're not going to get away with having a, a slightly different release in jab i mean sometimes you will but it's going to come at a cost your elbow is going to tear i guess baseball it's sometimes true yeah but like sprinting you guys i think do really well accelerating i've seen donovan accelerate too and i think you guys would struggle with upright sprinting and the mechanics there and then also yeah. the 400 i think you guys would really struggle just because you hate running so much like you just hate it and then also the mile i think you guys well actually i think you would be good at that that that's the thing is i never liked running but i could like you're suffer. good at I'm you're good, at, good at you're good at the yeah you're weirdly good at the mile and stuff. People don't know that, but Isaiah actually what was your best 1500 meter time uh, or 1600? It was just the mile four laps around the track. Okay, yeah. Uh, 530. <laughs> I went sub 530. That's yeah. so fast. Yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. And I wasn't I didn't train like I, it was basketball conditioning for like two months. That is ran, ran that crazy. So I think yeah. I think really where you would struggle though, just seeing you run up right, is the 400. You really struggle with. Fast, fast speed. Endurance. Yeah, like at the yeah. Like, yeah, like yeah. after fifty meters for you, it's just like yeah. you really have but a hard time. I also you did improve at that. Yeah, that's the thing though is I think if I did it a lot because twenty twenty one it was the it was the only cycle really where we've done like a lot of speed endurance yeah. work. Well, not even speed endurance. It was just long sprints. <laughs> like fifty <laughs> to sixty. It was we did yeah fifty to sixties and then one of the cycles was actually hundreds and like one twenties. I think you had me running. Did you um, do those properly on the track? Yeah. No, I did them on freaking 29 palms outside. <laughs> like, if I'd freaking die. But, I love it. Yeah, I did all the sprints, and I, I noticeably improved. Like, I was like. I was thinking about this. Like, what if, you know, it was Cole, RJ, you, me, in a chat, and we were like, oh, what do we want to do for RJ's birthday or something like that? And I was like, let's all go out. We'll go out to a football field, and we'll do a contest for long toss, vertical leap, approach vertical, like, I think I listed off, like, five or six things yeah. where I was like, and we can race. I was like, we can race, and we'll see yeah. who wins. Like, that'll be it. And I was like, Isaiah obviously has the highest vertical. I was like, I, I'm assuming RJ can throw, like, because RJ's Barrett is really freaking athletic. Like, yeah. RJ and Cole, both of them. Are, like, Cole will beat all of us in a race, I think. Yeah. For sure. Vertical, I think you would win. And then I think. Throwing would be interesting. Throwing is the one where I'm kind of like, because RJ his long RJ arms. and Cole love football, but I don't know if they were like baseball guys ever, yeah. but I, I would assume they can throw. I know you can throw. Yeah. You would you would beat me. I can do long toss, but not as well as you. And what else what else was in there? I think that was like it. I might have yeah. like said one other thing or something. Yeah. But when you look at the decathlon, the decathlon's like this conglomerate of all those events and like in the decathlon if you were to go through the events, Cole's probably going to win the 100. The 400 I think I would win. Hurdles Cole you or maybe RJ. I don't know what his mobility is. Not me. I would be horrible at that. RJ has crazy mobility. Really? This is a truly. Oh, you're right. Yeah. So he'd probably yeah. win hurdles, I think. And then pole vault, probably RJ, because he has a yeah. gymnastic background. Gymnastic, yeah. I think you and I would be scared to. Cole, maybe. Cole's kind of crazy. Yeah. I think I could pole vault. You think I you could pole vault? Yeah, I used to do backflips and shit. All right. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. So maybe you. Maybe you. Uh, shot put, RJ. Bro. RJ would RJ be <laughs> shot put. Yeah. Discus. I think you would pro I uh, maybe me just because I get it to fly straight, but I think you have the most potential in discus for sure. Yeah. Easily. Or RJ. I don't think yeah. Cole. Well, maybe. I don't know. Cole could be a sleeper. I've never seen him throw a discus. Yeah. I haven't seen him throw literally like at all. I think Cole or RJ would win jav. I think they would win that. High jump is going to come down to technique, but I think it would probably be you. I think yeah. you would win that one easily. <laughs> yeah. Long jump. I don't know about that one. You could take that one too. Um, maybe Cole. He's fast. That's what I'm saying. Cole might. Cole, Cole might put be his a sleeper, down. bro, and just <laughs> pop off. Yeah. But we've never seen him jump off one foot. I've never seen him yeah. jump off one foot. 
and I can't think of any other events, but that's, it's interesting when you look at that, like, kind of conglomerate of events and you kind of say where they'd be at. But I feel like each of you, you three, I think could easily score 7,000 points at a decathlon. I do think in track and field or in the Olympics in general, I think it's dumb that there is no vertical jump test. Like a, like a, just a flat, <laughs> just, a just flat straight up jump output. as high as you can. Cause it's a, it's a thing everybody has done. I like, guess that's like why they're like jump over the bar. Yeah. yeah. I think it started, but like, it's so much technique that's involved. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if you think about like, uh, I, I think it's probably started as a, all right, like, let's just like see who can, who can, who can jump the highest. the highest. Like that would make the mo- more sense too. Is like yeah. who can touch the highest. Yeah. But I guess technically you could just be like a seven foot gargantuan. Yeah. Well, I think it would be like, like a vertical jump test, like figure out, have right. a standard. We were talking about this at dunk camp. Even though you can manipulate physics and stuff, the easiest way is, I think, head. Height, like, because you nobody can really change their height. So you just measure your heads at, figure out where you touch, and that would be the easiest way to standardize it. If you can't cheat, you know, reach. But, dude, what if I just, like, have dumbbell arms? Like, they weigh, like, 50 pounds, and I just swing those sons of bitches super high and then just <laughs> drop them down. Have you ever uh, seen the guys that take the, that jump with dumbbells and it looks like they're floating? Yeah, 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 yeah. We've talked about this. I think that's part of the reason I, <laughs> I jump high, like vertex oh, and height yeah, checks yeah, yeah. and stuff, yeah. is my arms are Your like – Big old <laughs> arm swings. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, when you look at that, that's the one thing I just don't like about it. I like jump and touch because it's, it's also the only relevant thing that we care about. The thing is you still it, – it still plays a factor. you got half your arm. Yeah. It's still – But who cares how high your head gets above – or to a target, no one like that's well, it's not. A, it's not about that. It's you're figuring. It's standardizing it. You can't cheat it. The other ways you can. It's well, way too if, easy to cheat. What if you're it. on your tippy toes? What if you got a big footer? F- I mean, that's still that's true. another, yeah. another one. Yeah, yeah. That's why I like high jump though, because you got to jump over something. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't but high jump. Care. But high jump is, is way too technical. It's not as correlated to how high you can jump as a jump and reach as an actual jump and yeah. reach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, that's fair. I don't know. I would – I just don't – I don't love it. I don't love it. I don't know why. I just don't – because I know the physics, but it's, like, imperfect. I mean, flight time is decent. I think flight time is decent, but that's hard to do. I just don't – I think it's so stupid. I just think it's stupid. Like, I, w- like, if I saw a bunch of dudes jumping and just, like, fucking pencil diving in the <laughs> air, I'd be like, this is stupid. Like, yeah. this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. Or, like, know, or like trying to headbutt a bar. Like, I'd be like, I hate this. Like, I, like go up and touch it. Like, what's the point of that? I think laser. That's even dumber, though. Like, yeah, just jump up in there. like the reason people love the Olympics is because it's also, or track specifically, is because it's still somewhat of a, a entertaining sport. Whereas, like, just jumping for a laser. Yeah. Like, that would be like, the fuck am I looking at here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, there's no point of reference. So, I mean, that's also why I don't really like the jump mats. That's why, I mean, mm-hmm. other than when people look like they're floating in slow motion, I just don't love it. Yeah. But, I don't know. That's my lens. That's a different. I think high check is the, the It best exists. One. There is a laser Vertec. Yeah. Dude, look at the lizard. He's still back. Um, anyways, that's, that's generally, that was my view. Do you have anything else you want to add? I want to see more records broken. You want to see some my more, favorite thing. some more drugs? Yeah. <laughs> I need, we need, we need output freaks. No, yeah. I, I, that's my favorite thing in track is seeing a record get broken. Dude, weightlifting is still the best to watch. Those dudes, when they cry and they get so hype, oh, it's the best. Yeah. It's so cool. But, all right, I feel like it's a good place to end this. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. If you're interested in going and signing up for coaching and getting coached by yours truly or Isaiah, go to teachbestrength.com and sign up. Anyways, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out. Bye.